All right. Um, if I remember correctly, VIP is on the neg second and Anderson is first half? Yes. Oh. That's correct. If the judges are ready, I'm also ready. Yeah. All right, cool. So it's going to be one off in case. All righty. Where should we flow the off? Oh, you can just flow it on the same piece of paper. Oh, or a different one if you have one. Okay. Okay. A's interpretation of bitters must agree to send their, their cases in email chain. B, violation of opponents refusing email chain. C, standards. First evidence comparison by allowing debaters to read evidence as rebuttal is being read enables on the spot verification, open time and preparation to plan better strategy and organize class. By restricting time to review evidence to encourage abuse of misconstructive and misconstructive evidence at standards. This used to debaters' possession of reality. Second is clash. As public form becomes more speed based, the probability of missing a war becomes higher. Debaters who have trouble keeping up with the provider uh, are provided an aid to follow along at their, at their own pace, which allows for a deeper understanding of the opponent's case. By creating a better warrant understanding, better warrant comparison, and class occurs, creating a more educational debate. D is voters. First, education. Debate only, mat debate only matters in the sense that it provides education. If we stand around and argue about things that never end up happening, debate is a waste of time. It, feels, it feeds a false uh, perception of reality into participants. It hurts them in the future. Education comes before fairness. Constraint and Walls explain the eternal impact to all questions of competitive equity is ultimately participation in itself, which is good because debate is educational. Therefore, it is the case that the single most valuable benefit of one can gain from participating in debate is that it improves decision-making skills, which means fairness only ever terminalizes to education. Drop the debater A. Since, since the argument is entirely their entire advocacy, you inherently drop the debater. This does not, not apply to any argument they read that is disclosed as the individual argument. If they read responses in rebuttal and disclose them, they span through that round. For competing in, uh, in interpretations, A, reasonability is, is inconsistent amongst judges and reduces, public, uh, reduces predictability. B, reasonability requ requires judge intervention inherently which voids the, the round of fair clash. C, competing interests force debaters to clearly defend their revisions of debate instead of muddled ideas. D, reasonability can, uh, causes circular bright line debate that ends up muddled and, and, and anti-educational. E, reasonability promotes a race to the bottom where debaters are incentivized to be uh, most unfair as possible as long as they are reasonable, taking advantage of the vague bright line reasonability. No RBIs. A, because reverse voting issues disincentivize debaters from calling out the abuses of more talented theory debaters. This allows the better theory debaters to step on the less talented debaters, which makes them less inclined to taking the event. As such, more talented theory debaters can just bait theory that went on RBIs. B, also do, not, also do not win for, 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 for proving you don't cheat. But C, the, the, the precedent set by theory far away any time skew claims by my opponent. And D, the interpretation protects long-term education through precedent outside the round. If they don't respond to this as constructive, it is conceded for the round because theory, theory is inherently pre-fiat and thus the most important argument, meaning that before we can even debate the substance, there needs to be an attempt by, uh, for both sides to resolve theory. China's global infrastructure, oh, on case. China's global infrastructure drive, known as the BRI, is heading straight for bankruptcy. A sui fang of CNBC writes that most countries in the Belt and Road are already heavily in debt and thus cannot feasibly pay back China. As such, China is receiving a little media, media, little media immediate revenue and already shedding investment. As Pritchard 19 finds that the BRI investment fell 40% last year, and CNBC finds that each year the Belt and Road operates at a loss of $500 billion, ensuring its incoming bankruptcy should China not receive additional funding. However, Curtin explains that the only organization with the willingness and capacity to bankroll the BRI is the European Union. And without EU support, the Belt and Road is doomed. Allowing China's current trajectory of bad quality, risky investments will lead to an economic disaster. Gilchrist 17 of CNBC explains that China would amass billions of dollars in non-performing loans if the project fails. She concludes that this would cause a wave of loan defaults, making the Belt and Road's current trajectory a major threat to the global financial system. Historically, FX Street explains that when South Korea and Southeast Asian infrastructure bridge in, 97 crashed, in 1997 crashed, a four-year financial crisis and downturn followed, and this is nothing compared to what China is doing now. Ultimately, they conclude that it is a virtual certainty that China's bad investment policies will create a major financial crisis unless Europe steps in. The impact is global recession. Lakeley 19 explains that because China is the engine of growth for so many countries and economically interdependent with the world economy, any Chinese recession would go global. This would create a contracting of the global economy, forcing losses in jobs, government revenue, and economic growth. Overall, the IMF finds that the next global economic shock could push as many as 900 million people into poverty. Affirm. Uh, really quickly, what was the interpretation at the top? I just missed it. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, here. Uh, debaters must agree to send their cases in email chain. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, how many people didn't flow the theory? I can send a I can send a speech talk if people want to see it. I'll send the doc if you want. Yeah. Okay. First speaker is officially we're switching speaking order. Everyone ready? It's gonna go one off and then back over to his case. Wait, 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 is it a new off or is it just on? It's on his off. Okay. Heck is an off.
it's an obvious position, like when you're reading. <laughs> okay. Okay. Everyone ready? I'll just assume that's yes. Start off with his interpretation. He says that we must agree to send to email chains. There are three problems with this. First, he never sent us any of his cases from email chains. If anything, we'd argue that that links in to some degree on all of his standards and his voters. Talking about on-spot prep and clash, considering that the violation doesn't necessarily matter. He himself didn't send us anything. He didn't send us his rebuttal. He didn't send us front lines, and he also didn't send us his cases. Second, he didn't wait for Jackson to be on the call or for Jackson to say whether or not Jackson wanted to send it. I personally said we might want to save it, wait for my partner to get on, and then he went ahead and read this tea. I'd argue that's hella abusive. Third, we didn't even get to our speech we were the second speaking team, we probably would have sent it before our constructive instead of sending it before his constructive because then he probably could have had extra prep time, which is incredibly unfair. But on that, we have a counter interpretation. Debaters should not send their cases via email chain. The counter standard here is inclusivity. Three warrants. A, it takes more time to send the entire thing over email chain, which probably made it would, would, probably would have made it a lot harder for debaters to get on the spot. Second, it probably lags out my computer, literally my Chrome cache before this round and loading another email chain and setting a whole like 20 pages worth of cases would have made the debate a lot harder. And third, Jack has dyslexia. His second standard is talking about increasing speed, but for somebody like Jackson, for all debaters who have dyslexia and any other like reading disabilities, it would have made it a lot harder for them to read. For example, me, I am almost blind in both of my eyes and I have really hard glasses to read and I need to look very closely to it. If anything, I'd argue that this links directly into fairness and fairness comes before any of his arguments about education because if you value education over fairness, what you then do is you then create an exclusionary system where you justify marginalization and exclusion for education. Like you kick all the black and people of color out of the room so that the white people can learn. That's technically an increase in education, but it's a decrease in fairness that turns all of his arguments. Go to his standards. These are really bad. First, he's talking about on-spot on prep. We can literally still email him certain parts of our cases and still email him all of his prep, all of our prep, and whatever cards he calls for. There's no explicit reason we need to send on it. And if anything, I would say that sending him all of our stuff decreases the effectiveness of prep because instead of him directly going to one card that he asked for, he then has to search through an entire case worth of cards. Then he says that he can decrease abuse in his world, but you can non unique that. We can check cards in either world. Also, you can tell the judge to call for a card. This doesn't matter. And then he talks about it being speed-based, but no, there's not going to be speed in this round no matter what. A, this is a call. It's electronic. It's online. There are already speed limits. And B, a lot of the judges in this round explicitly said that they don't want incredibly fast speed. He's definitely not coming up here and spreading either way. He doesn't have any offense. And we'll also remember that speed's bad, especially when we're talking about reading off of something for people who have reading disabilities like Jackson. Then on his education about, on his voter about education, you can literally turn that against him. There's less education in the world in which I'm spending constructive having to respond to this stupid T-show argument instead of debating on case. Then he says, you can drop our advocacy, okay, in that world. You can also drop all of his front lines and you can drop all of his rebuttals because he never offered to send any of those via email. We'd argue that those things to the same stuff that he talked about above. Then on his, so he says that there are no RBIs, but that's stupid. If there are not RBIs, you then lead to a positional debate where people can just sandbag a hell load of T-shells onto everyone else. And it's just about who can speak faster and who can get more T-shells on the table. You need RBIs in order to take back against abuse. That sets the out of round precedent and that prevents abuse and debate. On that, let's go over to his case. There are a lot of problems. Off the top, he tells you that the BRI is already slowing down right now. That's not true. One, DW finds two months ago that the BRI just got another $64 billion. Two, Mackenzie 17 finds that half of all BRI investment is going to be funded by private capital. Anyways, he has literally no offense. And third, 1019 finds that nearly half of all Chinese extra, all of, all of, like half of Chinese international loans are all hidden, meaning he literally has no possibility of, he has like no possibility of determining what actually is and it's not being said. And then you could double mine all his arguments. We'd argue that there's nothing in the BRI that explicitly means China can and cannot. There's nothing that explicitly says China can and cannot work with Europe outside of the BRI. We'd argue you double bind him there. If China works with the EU on the BRI, it's because it's profitable. But Warren 19 finds that it isn't profitable and Europe will never work for them. And Stratford 17 furthers the EU is incredibly suspicious of the BRI and therefore would not work with them. And then in independent dissent at the bottom, China 19 writes that the goal behind the BRI is to internationalize the Juan. Fan 18 continues that Chinese companies are already under the Juan to invoice loans in the Juan. And Amadeo and Hedge 18 finds that if the EU began supporting the push for Juan, it would collapse the global reserve currency and cause a massive recession. Also, we meet his intro because we didn't read a case. Ready for cross? Yeah. You okay. can have the first question. All right. So let's start now. So let's talk about your responses to my counter. You give you a few responses about inclusivity. So let's talk about the like eyesight dyslexia deal. He still has to. Can, like, can you restate really that you're kind of like lagging out? My computer's like kind of slow right now. Can we restart cross? Can you do yeah. cameras for cross? 
Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Is it, oh, yeah, okay. We know who's talking. Thank you. All right. Right? Yeah, yeah, you can have the first question. Okay. So let's talk about your responses to my counter input, specifically on the third one, Sam, like, because you had, because he has dyslexia and you're almost blind. Do you still have to read your case? Huh? Do you yeah. still have to read your case in every round? When you call for evidence, do you read the evidence? I mean, usually. So what it was the, a lot harder to like so scroll through a whole stuff? bunch of evidence as opposed to just saying, can I see X card and getting X card? Wait, I, I don't see why you can't just look at each card individually. Like, is there a change? All, all, you definitely all don't have enough prep time for that. Card. What? You definitely don't have enough prep time for that. Also, it's no. going to be pretty hard to look at each card individually for people with reading problems, no, 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 right? No, no. Prep time is actually much better when you have email chain because you can read through the opponent's case while your opponent's giving a speech or while your while your teammate is giving a speech rather than having to do it. Are you going to front line? If Jackson comes up in rebuttal and reads anything, are you going to read responses to that? If he comes up and what do you mean? Like, are you going to read responses to anything I said? I'm going to respond to the theory shell and the arguments in my case, yes. Okay, are you going to send me an email chain for all of that? I'm sorry. Well, did, you do, did you send an email chain in previous rounds for rebuttal, for anything like that? I'm guessing you didn't. Why does rebuttal or summary or any of that different from constructive, considering you're doing the same thing, which is reading cards? No, I, no, the fundamental idea is that both sides need to disclose email chain to create a fair precedent of sharing prep, and that because that creates more clash, right? If one side greatly understands someone's argument better than the other side understands theirs, that is not clash. That is one team getting trampled over. For, for oh, the wait, so that your offense doesn't necessarily, wait, are you telling me that your offense doesn't come from whether or not I agree to send it via email? It's about whether or not we actually send it via email, right? Because you didn't send me your case via email, so don't you link into all your standards? No, because I asked you, and I asked specifically my interp is both sides sending email chain because that is where the clash comes from. Yeah, but you didn't send it via email chain, did you? I'm checking my email right now. I don't have anything. I'm saying if you do not agree to it, then it is not. Then I don't violate my standard. Because my, my point is that we both have to do no, so. For I'm aware being. of what your standard is. I'm saying your standard doesn't necessarily link back into your education, like voter, right? It certainly also, does. Why should, no, wait, no, it necessarily doesn't. I can say yeah, I'll email it, and then I don't email it, right? That meets your standard. I would run the show on you. I'm saying you have to do the email chain, but they both have to do the email chain. That is the point. Wait, but we didn't wait. No, no, no. Why don't why can't I just agree to send it and then not send it? Doesn't that technically meet your inter because I agreed to it? So it's going to be uh, on the shell and then on my case. OK, or well, first on an independent voting issue, then the shell, the, the, uh, the, shell, like the independent voting issue is on the shell, then on their case. That makes sense. All right, everybody ready? OK. First on the independent independent voting issue, his second response is that I didn't wait for Jack. He said that they, he said that they would probably be willing to do so like, like, like after Jackson gets here. That is straight up lying. I asked him if he was down in an email chain. He said no. I'm not trying to send out my stuff this early. And at that point, he's completely lying to you. This is an independent voting independent voting issue because he's trying to lie and sway the judge onto his side because he's lying about the theory show. At that point, that's an independent reason to vote him down because he's lying about the standards of debate and the ethics of debate. At that point, it's a reason to vote for us. Now let's get on to specific responses. First, he says that like, 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 like we never actually sent the email to our our our. our, our, our 
notification clearly says the bidders must agree to both send email chain because that's the only way you get the like, better clash overall. Because if one side can understand the other side's case, the other side's case much more than the other side can, this means that one side is a steamrolling the other. But if both sides have access to both sides' cases, ultimately we're going to see a better clash. That means that ultimately the debate gets a lot better in the long term. But on our counter, uh, on, onto the on the counter in terms of inclusivity, Purdue says it takes time to send. It's literally copy and pasting your case that does not take time to send. But then he says that, that, that his computer lags out. I, I, I would contend his computer's going to lag out no matter what. We start pulling up evidence. This is probably really not unique. But the third is the Jack has dyslexia. The problem is he, he always also the read case, always has to read the cards that he calls for. If anything, like we, we would say we link into inclusivity on our on our second uh, on our second standard because we say that because like a lot of debaters can't actually follow along with really fast paced reading. If, if they can, if they have the case in front of them, they can flow along at their own pace, which means ultimately we're going to be increasing inclusivity because no matter what, their inclusivity is non-unique, but we actually link into increased inclusivity. That means whether or not you're voting on fairness or education, you're still voting for us. But, but then they say we can still email like, like individual cards. The problem is the unique benefit of disclosure and email chain comes from the overall like an, or understanding of the case and having each card so that we can understand the thesis and the arguments of the case, give you better in-depth or understanding of the case, and that's why you get better clash. But they says non-unique, you can check cards in the world. Remember, this is not what it's about. We're saying you need to check the entire case, you need all the evidence because that way you can better understand what the what each side is reading and, and understand it. Now on to the impact of education. He says, um, fairness is better than education. We would say we still link into fairness because we, would, we increase inclusivity by allowing debaters to follow along at their own pace. Second, we'd also say they did not response to why we say in, uh, education comes first. The screen and wall seven explains that the external impact to all questions about competitive equality is prediction in itself, which means if there's no education, that, or like, he explains that ultimately the root cause of like fairness comes from education. At that point, we would say that we were going to be winning there. But on the idea of no RBIs, he says that like people can just read endless amounts of shells and then and, and the RBIs check back at this. The problem is the scope of why RBIs is good is better than the scope of why RBIs are or, sorry, the scope of why RBIs are bad better than the scope of why RBIs are good. Because we would say that the proposed voting issues ultimately disincentivize debaters from ever checking back checking back against views in the first place. Because really talented theory debaters will just bait theory and then like read a bunch of R bunch of RBIs in this, which means that only really good theory debaters will never be able to have views checked back against them. I would say this happens a lot more frequently. There's people just like spreading shells of PF. We don't see this happen whatsoever, but we do know that there are good theory debaters that try to debate theory and then beat people because of it. At that point, we would say there are no RBIs, but here, like, but maybe what's in the case, first thing the intro debaters must disclose open source cases, including evidence and documents, or they must agree to, sorry, they must agree to send email chain. They said no, even the email chain for the, for the round they violate. Standards extend the evidence comparison because if there's time for a new evidence during the round, they're having access to everything. We can, we can check back the we can check back into abusive evidence standards for debate, but also extend class because through having an email chain, class becomes exponentially better because there's low probability of the warp being missed, allowing for more in depth compare, warrant comparison, but also on voters. We debate for education, being able to understand their arguments. That means allows for better education because we can debate the, with the real implications of the round. Extend these three evidence from the dock. Uh, but yeah, now, now it's going to now it's going to our case. First, he says that the BRI got $64 billion. The problem that that is that is a drop in the bucket compared to the scale of the BRI. We see the general trend of the BRI is going a lot down in funding, but then he says that half the, half the funding of the BRI could for private capital by 2020. But this isn't true because they themselves tell you that the BRI is not profitable, which means that private companies would not want to invest in the BRI. We would say it's going down right now. China is the, ma the main funder of the BRI, and their, their funding has gone down 89% since 2015 because they could no longer can't fund it, and it's the loan start performance why it ultimately is going to crash. But they said the EU wouldn't work with them. The problem is it's simply not true because Garcia finds that the EU is the biggest global creditor to all the BRI countries in the status quo, which means the or is incentive to invest these countries, we would say that the EU joining the BRI prevents your BRI from collapsing because otherwise the BRI is going to collapse. And when that happens, all these loans will be non performing. And ultimately, that means that there's going to lead to a global economic crash. This outweighs their disad because 900 million people going into poverty ultimately outweighs the problem. on probability because we would say the China's debt road actually goes to global world reserve currency was only at 1.2% right now. We would say the recession only outweighs on this. We're also going to be voting on some problems uh, some theory.
Okay. Okay, that's Brad. Okay. Is anybody not ready? So the order is just going to be on the shell he reads and then onto the case debate that he reads underneath it. Is anybody not ready? Awesome. Time will start now. There's three responses we have to send on top. First, he never sends us his own case through an email chain. He's not meeting his own interpretation. But the second and most biggest thing, his interpretation states that both teams must agree to send cases to each other. There's a big problem with that. We didn't read a case in this round. We literally didn't have a constructive, so we meet his interpretation. We're not violating it in any sense. Instead, we're just going to have a bunch of impact terms that you're going to be voting on or the RBI. Um, then the second thing, Alec very explicitly did tell him to wait until I got on the call for us to make this decision. It's kind of unfair and frivolous for him to come and read a theory shell when I could have came into the call and convinced my partner to do this questionably good norm. Um, yeah, okay. Then extend the card, um, extend the fact that we can check cards in either world. So we're not really um, triggering any triggering any of his impacts. And uh, we then actually go to the RVI. He says we shouldn't have RVIs because it's going to stop PF from being a like system that can check back and solve any bad norms. But that's not true. When looking to the actual theory he reads, it's very frivolous in the fact that it's not correcting anything. It's not making any norm legitimately better. Um, yeah. He hurts education because this round isn't as inclusive as it could possibly be. Looking at the Skype messages, a lot of people didn't understand what was happening right after his constructive happened. With that, let's go on to his actual case debate. He drops a lot of stuff. He really mishandles the Juan turn that we, or the Juan, Juan turn that we read to you on the bottom, that Alec reads to you at the end of his constructive. Um, all he says is that there's like no probability that the Juan isn't very strong right now. That's our argument. The second we vote affirmative and the EU begins invoicing their payments in the Juan, that's when it has the propensity to overtake the US dollar and cause the world to go into a global recession. That's really big because that A, links into his impact, but B, collapses the EU, China, and the United States, hurting the entire economy. Um, yeah, okay. Now I have a bunch of turns to read to his case. Um, let me open it up. Okay. The first turn is coming from Kasari 15, who finds that absent the ability to impose tariffs, the BRI would allow China to dump goods price below production costs into the European market, destroying entire industries. Scott 15, um, right, contextualizes that this destroys 3.5 million jobs and cuts the EU's GDP by 2%. Also, turn. Tariffs actually go up in the app world. Triggers 19 explains that in an accord between China and the EU, it would push Trump to tariff the EU, unleashing a transatlantic trade war. To solve 19 furthers that this would cause a European recession. We link into his impact. There's no reason for you to prefer his side. If anything, you should default neg. Um, you should also turn it because Qatari 15 finds that China uses loan practices to develop infrastructure, drastically increasing the receiving company's debt. Stanzel 19 confirms that 23 BRI borrowers face crippling debt. High payments crowd out government spending and prevents the multiply multiplier effect. Um, yeah, those are turns you should probably be voting for us on his case. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah. All righty, you ready? Yeah. OK. So let's talk about the one. Why yeah. would Europe use the one? Um, because that's one of the parts of the BRI. They require that you invoice payments, like when you pay them back for the infrastructure project, that they do it in their own currency. Wait, but isn't China borrowing U.S. dollars through, through BRI funding right now in some capacity? Yeah, but they're also promoting their own currency. Wait, so then why couldn't they do the lending in U.S. dollars to the EU? What? Why couldn't they just lend to the EU in U.S. dollars then? Because they have an incentive to help their own currency as opposed to help the United States currency. Yeah, but they're already doing that. They're already helping U.S. currency. So why wouldn't that continue? Like, think about this. Like, I'm saying, I'm saying long you have to pick between the yuan and the dollar because the U.S. has a lot of leverage over them. I feel like they would pick the dollar because China just devalued its currency like two days ago. The economy went down a little bit. So I, that seems to me that the EU would try to use the dollar. That's so. fine. That's fine. That doesn't interact with the warrant that countries are required to pay back their invoices in the yuan. So whether or not they want to or not, that's just like a fact. But I'm going to take a question. Okay. Why didn't you wait for me to get on the call? I asked your partner. And he's yeah. and you were on the call from what I saw. I saw you at the beginning, and you're, I, I, I asked your partner. I did not hear you ask that question. Yeah, he said, no, no, I'm no. Okay, well, can I finish? Yeah. 
I asked her partner if he was down to the email chain. He said, no, I'm not trying to send our stuff out right now. He, and then every judge who was watching the round can attest, he had no, no point did he say, wait for my partner to get back on and then we'll let you know. Because I did not hear that. I was listening. I had it on full volume and every other judge in the round also could have heard that. Can I, get yeah, a I, I think you're lying. But you can that's, make that. that's it's up to the judges. Okay. Do you have a question? Yes. So let's deal with theory. Um, so specifically, let's talk about um, checking back like, or like, like sending out evidence, right? So you say that, like, or like you say that we can still check back evidence in either world because you can call for cards, right? Yeah. So d would it be easier to read through evidence during your partner's speech or to call for it outside of that, use your prep time, which could have been used for like decision calculus to call for cards then? Wait, it's easier. I mean, I can't do two things at once that easily. Like I, I'm not going to be able to hear the speech that's going on and take in everything I read from the card as effectively. Okay. Well, that's helpful. Let's take out the fact that you can use it in the speech, right? Would it, like, even if you use it during prep time, would it not be easier to have all the cards right there so you don't need to ask for them to get the card and like, and, like ask for them to ask to like show them where it is? You can just look at them all and simultaneously. Wouldn't that not save time? What's the impact of that though? Like it just takes me asking someone a casual question, kind of like the question you didn't ask me in the beginning of the round. But the I'm impact of that is that we can now look at a lot more pieces of evidence that way we can get a better understanding of the round and enable better clash. Okay. So let's talk about this. So if you truly think this is a good norm, why didn't you send us your case in an email? Because these specifically interpretation says that it's only good or like argument is only it's only good if both sides do it because that is what enables clash. Otherwise, it is you understanding my case better than I can understand yours and you trampling me. That is not fair. That is not educational. Okay, I'm gonna take prep time. Alrighty. Is everybody good? Okay. It's going to be the independent voting issue, Shell, then my case. Is everybody good? First and foremost, the thing you vote on is the independent issue, or the independent voting issue, where they say that, like, hey, like, where they say that, like, that they said, like, to wait for, for the partner to get on. This simply did not happen. Anyone watching the round can attest that he said, oh, I'm not trying to spread my stuff right now, and that was the end of it. I continue listening. He did not say that. This is an independent voting issue because the debaters are lying in rounds about precedent. It is going to discourage people from actually for, for, for joining the activity. It makes a lot more, a lot more of a toxic environment, which means it prereqs any sort of debate argument because it means that it discourages debating in the very first place at that point. That's an independent reason to vote for us, and they also did not respond to the idea of of the independent voting issue in some in rebuttal, which they can't respond to in summary. At that point, you know that if it's true, you vote for us on on like on face right here. This is literally the easy way you can vote. But also, let's talk about the theory shell specifically. The first thing they say is we never send the case. The theory shell explicitly says that no matter what, both sides have to agree because that is where you get the ultimate clash. But then he says that, that like we, like, we they didn't read a case. The, like, the, the, this is like semantics. I would say the general argument is that it's like, better to understand the evidence that is being read because that we can have a better like clash on the evidence. At that point, where they still read a lot of evidence reading impact terms, this is a really squirrely way to get out of it. and It's pretty abusive. But then thirdly, said out to me to wait. This isn't isn't true. Look to the reverse voting issue. But then they say they say we can check cards in either world. This simply isn't true because the amount of cards you can check and the quality of the cards you can check improves when you have the case because you can just look through the case very fluently. And at that point, you can better check evidence check back. But, the, but first, like, extend, send the interpretation where we say debaters must must do email chain before the round to those uh, arguments. But second, but B, the violation they literally didn't do it. I asked them. He said we were not trying to like send out the prep. But the third is standard because we say that it enables better clash because like, now you have a better understanding of, of everybody's arguments and as such it enables a better debate because if you understand the argument better, you get better debate and as such you get more education education is also to the voter because ultimately like if there's no educational value in debate there's no reason doing it all we're doing is wasting our time on weekends where we could be having fun but i would say that ultimately uh yeah now like they don't really at least only rbis always say it's, it's frivolous this isn't really good they don't really respond to new rbis let's move on to my case First, the first thing, like, they read it in uh, Turner Rodel saying trying to conduct goods, destroys millions of jobs. This is not unique. Never say why it would actually suit, like, increase a ton in the BRI. But they say Trump's tariffs going to happen. But the Asia Times explains that it have to pass these House and the Senate. And it says that so the House and Senate would not pass these tariffs on the on the EU. There's no recession link. But then they say that debt traps are bad. But our link of the recession outweighs this argument because we would say that if all the loans default, this only has more debt, more defect in the debt to the countries, which means no matter what, if we win our link, we outweigh this link. But let's talk about this. They're going to go for the fact that BRI got 64, 64 billion dollars. The problem is this is a drop in the bucket and they said half of the private they say the half is going to be funded by private capital this is also not true because the bri is not profitable no one wants to fund it that's why china is struggling so much right now because they don't have the funding for the bri at that point we would say that like, if the eu joins they can help finance the bri and that's really crucial 
because one, the EU is already the, the largest creditor to all the nations that are already in the BRI, so they have incentive to fund them. But when that happens, the BRI can stay alive, which is really important because if the BRI fails, all the loans that are connected to it default and are become non-performing, creating a global financial crisis, creating a recession that pushes 900 million people into poverty. First, this outweighs their turn on probability because we don't know when this like sort of when the water is going to take over. It's going to be a long time frame. We would say this happens in the next few months. Then also it outweighs the debt traps because we would say like hopefully that this happens on a greater magnitude. Also it outweighs dumping goods. The dumping goods is non-unique. Also I would say a worldwide recession affects every single country rather than China dumping goods into one country. At that point, the world such is the biggest impact on the round on the uh, on case, also on you know, you got your buddy for us on the TV show. Awesome. It's gonna be the T show his case. Everyone ready? Everyone good? Okay, I'm just gonna assume everyone's ready. <sighs> on his interpretation, he says that I didn't say wait for Jackson. One, I did. Two, this is totally non-verifiable. Three, don't drop people for this. Setting a precedent for dropping debaters for non-verifiable arguments is super abusive and it leads to things like screenshot wars, which are totally not allowed. Then he says, we said we literally didn't send the case. I literally said this at the end of the constructive. And then he comes up here in summary and tries to say that it's just about general evidence. One, that's not what his interpretation is. The specific wording was super important. We spent time making sure this was cleared up before our constructive. Second, this argument is brand new in summary where he's telling you that it's about evidence, evidence in general. This is now time skewing Jackson and I because now we have to switch our arguments against his thing. We literally explicitly did not read a case because his interp was explicitly about cases. And I was switching this interp midway through the round, which is hella abusive, super time skews us. That is an independent reason for dropping him. But also, we didn't just, we just literally just did not read a case. We do not, we already made his interp. There is zero, literally zero reason to drop us. And then at the bottom, he says there are no RVIs. His reasoning for why there shouldn't be RVIs is it deters people from actually checking back against abuse. But at the point at which his interp is, we should send cases, and Jackson and I did not send cases. This is the perfect time to have an RBI because this is a frivolous TV show that is trying to shift halfway through the debate and it's being super and it's being super abusive with it. So at that point, extend the two very clean RB, RBIs, which is one, he decreased the education of the round because now we have to talk about this stupid T instead of actually talking about the Bell and Road Initiative, which would have been a hell of a lot more educational if we could, well, read a case. And second and most importantly, it decreases inclusivity because as you see in the Skype chat, not many people know what's going on and we have to spend time clearing up what he's reading instead of talking about what he's reading. That that is what's most important. On that, let's go over to his case. He cold drops Juan. What we tell you is that the Juan is slightly taking over right now, but the moment that the EU joins the BRI, they begin invoicing Juans, they begin invoicing loans back in the Juan, and then that allows the Juan, or the Juan, I'm sorry, I don't know how to pronounce it. I like English is my first language, to take over, which then collapses the dollar entirely and causes a world recession. We'd argue that this outweighs his case on probability and on anything regarding strength of link because there's literally zero defense extended on this argument in summary. But on his case, he tells you himself that it is not a profitable in initiative. Well, at that point, there's literally zero reason that anybody else would have begun funding it. They tell you EU is already a creditor to BRI nations. That's an explicit reason the EU would not fund the BRI because they make money off of loans they give to these independent countries. There is not a single piece of evidence that they give as to why the EU would give money over to China. At that point, also extend the Trump tariffs turn. His evidence that the Senate and the House wouldn't pass it literally are talking about the status quo. It doesn't interact with the argument that in a world in which the EU turns their back on the United States, that then, that then pushes the United States to enforce tariffs on the EU, which then crashes their economy as well. That is two independent links to a worldwide recession. He really only has one. We have a hell of a lot cleaner. Like, honestly, his case is the Titanic and we all just watched it sink. You're voting neg. You had to pull out the line against me, bro. <laughs> All righty, ready for cross? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So let's talk about the shell. We'll talk you, about you need to extend all parts of the shell in each speech, correct? Huh? Like, if you're going to read, like, a voting issue on my shell, you need to extend that in every speech, correct? Like, that's kind of the agreed upon Nora theory. Like, sure. Okay, Jackson so in rebuttal, why, talked about how you decrease RBI inclusivity. voters in rebuttal. Yeah, what? Jackson went up there and said you decrease inclusivity. People have like no idea what's happening. I said he, I think he said, no, he said word for word, he look at the Skype chat. He extended no warrant. He didn't implicate it or weigh it at all. He didn't say drop it a bit. He didn't do any of that. He didn't say, he didn't like, there was almost no extension to this whatsoever. I completely did. Yeah, we did. I told you, how, like, it's not as inclusive. Also, right. also, you don't have to extend in every speech, it's rebuttal. Look at every judge's paradigm. Okay. Look at every judge's paradigm. Extensions are talking about 
what's it? Summary. Like, you can have whatever norms you want. I'd argue I want to go off the norms of the judges because it makes the debate a hell of a lot more inclusive. All right. Do you have a question? Are um, you switching your interp halfway through the debate? No. So it's just about cases. Our argument is that you need to disclose evidence. That is the central thesis. You guys can try you to find your interp around that. But all you're you, doing is trying to avoid you like, read, like, actual abuse. Can you read your interp for me word for word? Because I have it right in front of me, but I think it's better if you do it. Because there might be a little bit of confusion. I mean, it actually do it doesn't even matter if it says cases. Here's why. It one. does matter. It does because no. you switch. Jackson and I's entire, like my entire response no, no, no. to no. your Here's team why. was explicitly because... about a case. No, because That's before, why wait, 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 wait. before the round, I asked you, are you down to do email chain? And at the point where you said no, this means you violate the because it says both debaters have to agree to do email chain. At the point where you didn't do it, that means you're like saying the pre precedent your agreement. Email is, is about cases. Like, like you want to talk about norms in like theory debate. Another big norm in theory debate is the specificity of the wording of the inter. The specificity of your inter is talking about cases. It doesn't talk about evidence. It doesn't talk about rebuttals. It doesn't talk about front lines, back lines, anything. Regardless of that, you still violate it because when I asked you the question, there was no like assumption that I was going to read theory. So there was no point in your mind where you were like, oh, I'm just not going to read a case. You had the assumption of reading a case and you said no, which means you did not agree to it, which means you violated the theory interpretation. What do you mean? Jackson, I... When I asked you the question about whether or not you were willing to do email chain, you were under the interpretation that you were reading your normal case. At that point, you did not agree to in your case. Like that violates the theory shell inherently. No, it doesn't violate the theory shell inherently. There is no case. Like, how can we violate that if we don't do what you're saying? The There's problem literally, is dude, your violation is they did not put their case in the email chain. Well, there is no case. Dude, yeah, you're I saying, like, like, debaters I should stand, and it's like, I don't have legs. Or, it's like, these literally do not make sense. We don't have a case. There's no way to put it in an email chain. Like, I'm just super confused as to what you're trying to claim we're abusive of. We did what you wanted. We got rid of a case. There's no case. You also just read, a dis out of, you read a dis out of constructed. That's not a case. I don't know what it is. That's a turn to recessions. Okay. It's, a, it's not a turn. It's a dis out. Yeah, it's call it's it. an independent yeah. argument. Anyway, it links into your same impact. Okay. All right. It's going to be shell or independent voting issue shell their case or my case. The cleanest place in the round to vote because it's uncontested is the independent voting issue of them saying that, 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 that they said that they wait for my partner and then we'll do it later. This simply did not happen. The verbatim quote was, are you down to the email chain? And he said, no, I'm not trying to send my stuff right now. And then there was a pause of silence for a long amount of time. Every person who was in the chat listening at the, at the point in time can confirm this. And at that point, because they're lying, this is such a standard for the round. It's a, the reason to drop them because it doesn't incentivize people from joining debate because people can just lie to get out of arguments. Also makes it a really toxic environment. Also makes it a lot less educational. At that point, that's a reason why you should vote them down it says never responded to you this is the easiest place you can vote you vote for me on face but now it's down to theory so specifically the first thing they say is that like we can check cards in the world the problem is we can't check the cards on the same level because like ultimately if i have the entire case i know what all there is saying at that point i can better understand the argument and have better class with it but then they say it's not inclusive we would say if everyone can understand and flow the case and read it at their own space that is the most inclusive thing they can do because a lot of people can't flow speed but if you have the case right in front of you that doesn't matter at that point it's more inclusive but then they but then they review this two like voting issues on uh, education and that were not in rebuttal, which is really important. You can't read like brand new pieces of offense that were not in rebuttal. At that point, this is super abusive for them. You can't vote for this. But now, oh, yeah, they, they also in the time thing, they can't do that. But I would say, they, like, now, yeah. But also, extend the interpretation where say debaters must agree to do, to, to, to do email chain before the round. Even if it's cases, they had the assumption that they were going to read a case when I asked them, and they did not, which means they violated the theory shell. This is really, that's really important because we say this, like promoting the standard of that email chain is a positive one is the biggest, is really important because people more people do email chain, we get more feedback and get better, more better, better, better class. The problem is they, they, they knew that they were not going to be like, reading email chain, and then they thought they were reading a case. At that point, they systematically violated the, the, the shell. That is like, the easiest place you can vote to that. But then on standard, you would say they improve class because they give a better comprehension of the opponent's case, you get a better, higher quality round, improving education. And education is the most important thing. It's not educational. There's literally no point to the activity, and we're just wasting our time. At the, point, the entire reason why the education has, why, the, why our event has meaning is because of education and because they harm it. And it's a reason you should drop them and vote pro. Okay. Yeah. 
You got this. Awesome. Okay. Time will start now. E. Cole drops the RVI in which we tell you that you should be dropping the debater today because like he's running a very frivolous shell that A, we don't actually bite into, and B, isn't helping the debate at all, and C, is decreasing education in this entire round. As I've said, and as my partner said throughout this entire round, we've been looking at the Skype chat, no one is able to comprehend this. But the second reason you're gonna be voting him down is because he has a shifting interp and he's been a moving target throughout this entire round. In the beginning of the round, it started that both debaters had to agree on sending cases through email chains to each other. What happened to that? He then changed it and said that all teams must send the evidence that they have throughout front lines and back lines in every different part of the debate. We can't meet, like, we can't gauge if we're meeting it or not, the burden, if he's going to change it throughout the middle of the round. But that's where you're going to be voting for us in the theory debate. Let's go into the case debate. He really just cold drops the one argument. He that You're going to be voting for A, like, first on probability, because when you join the DRI, that means they're going to start invoicing all the projects in the one, and that means they're going to be taking away the emphasis this put on the U.S. dollar. That stops the U.S. dollar from being the global reserve currency and pushes the entire world into a recession that links into his global recession impact. Also, let's go back to the argument where he says that um, we, you should drop us because Alex lying, that he didn't say we should wait for my partner. First, this is unverifiable. He dropped that response. But second, extend the responses where Alex says this isn't a good reason to drop the debater. Like, in the end of the day, I didn't hear him asking me this question, and it, I wasn't taking into consideration when asking this theory. Um, he says it's toxic. You want to know what else is toxic? Like, the process of us lying, he says that's toxic. It's also really toxic for him to try and bait us into falling into a, like, theory trap before a round even happens and before a partner isn't even there. Um, yeah, if anything, and if you don't want to vote in the recession stuff for us, it's probably non-unique. Like, a recession is going to happen into their world, and you should default neg. Um, and last thing, actually, yeah, just vote up. Okay. I'm clapping. All right. Um, the judges will spend time doing the RFP and stuff. So if people want to wait for the RFP, that's fine. Sorry, what was that? I, I, I had to leave the track, so you want to let me turn on my mic. Um, Yukio basically give out their prep uh, so early on in the topic, um, which is what basically how I evaluate the rest of the round from. Um, so we go to the interp, which is like the key debate that happens in the back half of the debate here. Um, I think for Anderson, there's a questionable job of the interp being consistent throughout the round. But again, that's also unverifiable. So I have to default to the only thing that is actually constant towards the round, which is like the actual text of the interp on the speech doc that's sent out. Um, and the wording of the interview is debaters must agree to send their cases. And I think the key word here is agree. Um, and I think the explanation is done well in final focus. Um, so at the point in which when you ask them to send an email chain, um, they say the answer is we don't want to send out our prep so early on the topic. I think that violates the interpretation um, because you're not agreeing to send your cases because it doesn't matter if you read a case or not um, because you're not agreeing whether or not you're reading a case. And I also think that there's a conceded argument out of first final focus that says when Anderson asks for email chain disclosure, VIP is under the assumption that they're reading a case as is like the normal round, um, which is another reason they violate because if you answer in that way under the assumption you're reading a case, um, you violate because you're not disclosing your case that you're planning on reading, right? Um, so like the in-round action of not reading a case is reactionary to that um, at the point where the violation already happened outside of round, um, I then don't think you actually meet the interpretation. Um, however, for example, like if the response to the question is we aren't reading a case, um, then I do think that meets the interpretation because then the wording is cases and you're not agreeing because you don't need to because you're not reading a case. Does that anyone have a question on that part? I actually have one question if that's okay. Yeah. Just for like a clarification thing, because like I know that you're like really big and like T debate and all that, you know what I mean? Like you did parley with Ben and everything. Yeah. Um if his harms are about like structural dissads of lack of email disclosure of case given the case's existence in round how do you link his uh first argument back to his standards um i think by violating when he asks the question i think you are precluding the possibility of accessing those benefits right i think because on the standards debate, I think that doesn't really happen. I think it's pretty clear that Anderson wins the standards debate in final focus, especially. Um, there's not much that you guys put on the standards debate. Um, 
And I think that like at that point, it means that there is some risk that if like two teams were to read a case and then two teams were to like have that debate, um, then it would have happened because the world of the interpretation is you, they ask the question before the round, you say, yes, both teams send their cases on an email chain and then we have a debate. Um, so it's a question of like competing worlds, basically the world of the interpretation, um, because your answer to his question precluded the world of the interpretation from happening, which is why you violated, um, which means that they can't access any of the benefits because they win the benefits. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, again, on the standards voters, but at the point where I think you violate the interpretation, I think they're winning fairly cleanly um, because education over fairness is conceded after rebuttal um, and there's no like standard defense extended on final focus. So if I think you violate, then I vote neg. And I, even if I do think you have like a risk of winning, I, I, there's no extension on the RVI. Um, there's no terminal impact extended on the case debate either. Um, so I think because there's risk of offensive interview in either world, I can still vote F pretty comfortably. So you don't think the standards are predicated on actually having an in-round case? Um, I think they are, but the thing is your violation precludes that, right? Like that's what I was saying is as in like, if you answered the question with, we don't have a case, we're not reading a case, um, then you meet the interpretation. But at the point where you've conceded the argument that when you answered the question, you were under the assumption you were reading a case, then I do think that, um, by violating the interpretation, they get access to their offense and, uh, on the standards. Okay. All right. Does anyone want to go next? Just a clarification. Um, I started recording only halfway through Ben's RFD, so I want to clarify for the recording and anyone that might be watching the YouTube stuff. Um, the first part that you made was just that he made the decision off in the beginning of like asking people about what happened. I think yeah. that's the only part that we missed. Do you yeah. want to read that this part? Is on the independent voting issue, um, I don't vote on it because I didn't personally hear the pre-run exchange, so I have no way to be certain about what exactly happened. Um, but I use the other people who actually, like the judges who actually heard what happened as like a, a, like a template to evaluate what happened in regards to the rest of the round. Yeah, you can go next, by the way, if that's with everyone. Yeah, so I have, um, the two disclaimers that I have at the top is one, I am terrible with theory. Two, I am terrible with speed in terms of like the constructive and that fast. This means, I think, two things. One, that I'm going to be very confused with the flow because I don't understand, like, where to put the arguments on flow um, in terms of, like, theory. So there's going to be things that I miss because I'm being confused while flowing. Two, if it's fast, I'm going to obviously miss things. That said, some of the stuff in my decision is based on things that I didn't think were and so I know that I'm going to be forced to look at the theory debate first because apparently it's a pretty whatever that means. Um, I think there's two pieces of offense. The, well, first is the independent argument of the lying stuff. I was sure before the round. I can say Anderson said about his partner getting on the call before he said it with more about to do email chances early in the topic. So I am comfortable with saying, with um, giving the app some sort of offense here. Um, I think the was it in focus by IP is correct that the question should for all the people on the team are on the call, but that's what the argument was free and robust. And so I don't think you could go for that argument and try to focus on otherwise I would see also, because you're changing and shifting advocacies throughout the round. Um, so I think it's too new to evaluate that sort of argument. And I do think Anderson is correct that there is some sort of decreased educational benefit from this lying stuff. The second theory argument that I could have voted for is the one about the shifting advocacies. Because honestly, um, the case stuff, right? Shifting advocacies is what constitutes. Does not. I do think that VIP choosing to say we 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 didn't read a case. Um, I buy that, but I also think. Oh, hold on, I'm confused for that. Okay, yeah, yeah. I feel that VIP exclusively wanted to find a focus as to why the shift in that I think it was that time scheme. 
So I'm forced to work off of the education in the independent. So I'm just really bad at flowing. And I miss that extension in final focus. I can vote off of the case argument going on because I can just ignore the of your winning independent office. I don't want to vote on the argument. Um, I don't think Neg is winning any link into the Yon argument only because both in summary and final focus, y'all only frontline it and don't have any link. I require extensions of links in order to buy arguments. Um, I think y'all y'all did this in the last round and I don't think. Um, so that would mean that I don't think there's offense on the case and I presume the team that lost the coin to the according to Perry. Any questions? No, good. We're all good. Next, when I want to say, I'm thinking all of you. French, on your own, if you want to give an RP. Okay. Um, I actually agree with a lot of what you just said. said. Um, I'm not a theory debater at all, and I think this round became kind of inaccessible for a lot of people who don't fully understand like how theory works because both teams were extremely blippy in explaining arguments, so I did become a little bit confused. However, what my RFD came down to was when I looked at like the shifting interpretation thing, like Ben did, I also did look back to um, what Anderson said in the beginning, and it just says debaters must agree to send their cases in email chain. I was here before the round, and Alec, you did say that you don't want to send it because specifically the reason that you don't want to send out prep preseason. However, I don't think that's anything to do with waiting for Jackson to come to the call. That's why I want to go into the independent like um, voter about that. I think this is like the only concrete weighing that is done in today's round as to why lying is like a prereq to education and like keeping people on activity and like all the stuff that Anderson does. I also don't think that VIP at all responds to the weighing. Therefore, I feel like pretty confident um, voting ba based off of this like independent voter. Um, going on to case substance, uh, in Jackson, in your final focus, you concede that a recession is going to happen no matter what, and it's literally going to be inevitable. That's the only impact that I get coming out of the yuan um, in either speech. Therefore, I don't feel comfortable voting off this argument if there's literally no form of any sort of like impact extension at all. You don't tell me how many people this affects or weigh it at all. So yeah, that was my decision. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, I think you're muted. Uh, uh, your mic's off. You're muted. Okay, yeah, my bad. All right. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I, I voted on the independent issue as well. Uh, I was, like, there before the round, and I heard the exchange, so I'm, I'm pretty confident in voting here. And so far as, like, also the weighing on, like, the education of, like, lying bad is also conceded. I think on, like, the RBI, um, I think, like, I look back to, like, the interp, and it does say, like, agree, so, like, um, even with that, I don't think they're like shifting. I also think it was like really muddled. I can't really figure out the RVI and it's like worth or weighing in comparison to the independent voting issue. And so insofar as like, I feel like, like I basically thought the voting issue was conceded since I heard it, I feel more comfortable voting there. Uh, I thought like the time, wa like reading shells is like time wasting also doesn't respond to the weighing because like education was conceded after a bottle. Um, I think on substance, there's nothing to put on either because like I don't know if I get like even a clear extension of the impact of the one turn, but also like recessions goes conceded, like is literally conceded not unique, which I think is the impact coming off the one arg. So yeah, I, I don't feel comfortable voting on uh, substance as well. So yeah. All right, awesome. Okay, is that all of the people who squirreled? I think yes. So, yeah. Alex can start talking. Someone who voted for Neg who wants to go first. I'll name all of them if you want. Um. I don't. I don't mind starting if someone. If no one's gonna do it. That's Tyler. Hi. Okay. Okay. So, um, I did vote negative. Wait. Oh, sorry. Are we good? Yes. 
Yeah, we're good. Sorry. Okay. Um, I did vote Neg. I think this was a really interesting debate for like obvious reasons. You know, like the t like the email chain theory shell isn't something that I've heard before. Um, I think it's a super interesting argument. And um, yeah. Um, I guess we'll start on the independent voting issue that the affirmative extends. Um, obviously, like Valley, y'all did say that at, um you didn't. You did say that you didn't want to do the email chain specifically because of preparation reasons. Um, I, I don't I didn't ever hear an exchange where you were like, oh, my partner wasn't here or it wasn't up to him. Um, the reason I didn't vote on this is because I don't feel like there is really any compelling weighing as to why I should vote affirmative on this issue or let alone like evaluate this issue in the debate. I think it's like really going. I think it's I think it's clean in a sense, but I, I don't think that the weighing is there. And honestly, I really buy the summary's analysis that it's probably a bad model to vote on lying in an interaction that if we don't know it actually happened in the space. And I think like the fact that Ben and other judges had to consult other judges in order to make their decision is part of the issue. But I do agree that it did happen. It was an issue. That's not where I signed my ballot. Um, I think the reason I voted negative primarily is on the counterinterpretation stuff. I think the analysis coming from rebuttal and summary is is like pretty compelling that no one in this debate, like no, the spectators in the chat and people don't know what's going on. I think it would have probably been more educational to have a discussion about the Belt and Road Initiative rather than having what you would describe as this very frivolous, uh, frivolous theory debate. Um, so I pretty much voted on the like the edu like the educational harms that were coming off the negative um, because y'all or I guess the affirmative excuse me because y'all read this frivolous debate. Um, I think the one thing that I will mention that I don't I don't think other judges have really mentioned yet is the pre fiat implication that the negative or that the affirmative reads means that there is no case debate that can occur because the theory debate comes first. So like my internal question to both teams is why do you continuously like why do you read the yuan like why do you read the yuan stuff? Why is all this case debate happening if it is true that theory comes first? And the debate is pretty much theory for 90% of it. So why is there this 10% extension of case if both teams can see that it's pre fiat theory comes first and there's in inherently no reason or no any any there's no possible reason to vote off the case stuff because the theory debate comes first um that's how i saw it um y'all kept saying like it's it's you on i don't know there are a bunch of spectators talking about it, it it's you on i thought that was kind of kind of funny um there was one more thing i was going to mention i don't know if i remember what it was so um i will oh yeah yeah this is the one thing i was going to read y'all talked about uh valley y'all talked about how you were like they debate they were going too fast they were spreading um you definitely spread the yuan dis ad like it was too fast um that's all i have to say but good round yeah that's i voted neg um i can probably go next okay um so i think my decision is a little bit different um uh couple of things a um not super good with theory not super familiar with it um but i'll like kind of go through and explain um or try to to the best of my ability so okay um okay so starting on the independent voting issue at the top of case i also was not on the call when this happened which means that i don't think it's necessarily fair for me to um evaluate it in the round especially because i was not like here and i also just like don't think it's like I also don't think it's fair for me to like consult other judges about it. Like I understand Ben's reasoning for doing that, but personally don't feel super good about that. Um, so like, I don't feel comfortable voting on the issue and I kind of like get this like extension that it's unverifiable. Um, I think that that's not necessarily true for a lot of the other judges, but for me, I think that's true. So I don't feel comfortable voting on that issue. Um, uh, just in general, uh, I'm not happy that that's like necessarily the decision that I had to come like come through through the independent voting issue, but it's kind of like what happened. Um, onto the shifting interpretations thing, um, I did go back and like read um the interp shell, but the the issue I have with it is that I feel like so the front line to the argument that okay, so essentially like my issue with it is that VIP makes the argument and says like we didn't read a case, and then like Anderson's response to this argument is essentially saying oh it's not about the case, it's about the arguments themselves. So even if the interpretation like says um, whether it's like about agreeing to the case or not, I do think that your front line to the argument does kind of um, shift the uh, interpretation in the round because you're saying that it's more about like the arguments um, being disclosed in general rather than just the case. Um, so at that point, I like buy the shifting interpretations thing, and I don't think it's necessarily fair for me to like um, fully evaluate their shell insofar as like that was the narrative that I kind of like got from you, um, at least like in um, your, I think it was 
I think it was like your summary. I'm not really sure. My flow is a little bit messy right now. Um, okay, so then on the like counter interpretation. Oh, oh, the other issue that I had is I'm not really sure um, if this is like you is specific to theory or not, but I felt like there was very, very minimal weighing done in this round. Like both of you were kind of going for like education impacts off of whether um, uh, off of whether like this theory should be read slash like also whether like the the interpretation themselves but neither of you are doing weighing on like which has like a bigger impact to education i'm not sure if that's something that really matters in theory or not i don't know i um uh the other thing is that there's not really like um any sort of like extension um like okay so like vip keeps going for case offense but there's no extension from anderson or from either of you as to whether i like why i should evaluate the like pre fiat impacts first like i understand that that was read in the constructive but I felt like, at least for me, like person who does not understand theory, I would have wanted that in the latter half of the round um, to kind of like be able to like know what like offense to evaluate first. Um, on the like Yuan issue, um, I kind of disagree. Uh, I don't know. I kind of think that the argument is extended. Like I kind of disagree with you, Kiho, that it was just frontlined. I think that there's some sort of link extension happening there. Um, I don't think the impact extension is super clear. Um, Oh, uh, side note, on the two impacts to, like, decreasing education, I don't think that they're super clearly extended in final focus, or the decreasing um, the education in the round. They're also, like, neither of them are kind of, like, weighed. Nothing is really weighed um, at this point. Like, I think, like, on the, oh, last thing on the Yuan argument, on the thing about, like, recession being inevitable, I interpreted that as kind of, like, uh, an either or scenario where you were like, if you buy this argument, vote here, but if you don't, you should presume neg. So that's kind of why I didn't like scratch it off my flow um, immediately. But that's probably just like a, a, a preference issue, or at least how I flowed the argument. Um, I think that there, there's at least like a risk of offense um, coming off of like uh, the recession argument. If even if the like numeric aspect of the impact is extended, I at least get some sort of blippy um, idea of a recession happening. And then on the decreased education, I think there's like a risk of offenses uh, there as well. I'm not super happy um, voting on either of these, but I think that there's like a larger risk of offense um, on those than on the interpretation due to the like shifting interpretation stuff that I said a couple minutes ago. Uh, so that's why I vote there. Okay, uh, I can go now. Um, so for me, on the independent offense thing, one, the weighing that it takes out education wasn't necessarily extended in final focus. But two, the like what Sarah Catherine Tyler said, the fact that Ben, for example, who did vote on it, had to consult with other judges is kind of silly because it proves that Valley's weighing about how it's like a bad metric to judge around is probably true. But more importantly, like, I mean, this is like, it's just not a great place to vote just saying that like, you know, this happening before round, which by a lot of times, especially in like, when someone's reading disclosure theory, for example, before the round, a lot of it happens like over text or something where there's like a lot of proof of it. And if it's a lot of it's just subjective, like I don't want to make a decision that other judges don't have the ability to make because then they just make the round super skewed. Um, so that being said, the reason I voted neg uh, was pretty much just on the on the actual theory argument. I don't have a lot of experience with theory. So excuse me if I sound like, you know, I make no sense. But basically, uh, the only real way that you can vote AF is the idea that the, you know, in, that debaters should be sending out uh, emails the, because like uh, cases are, like should be disclosed or something, right? But there's a shift in advocacies where I'm hearing early in the round there should be cases. So Valley circumvents that by not reading an actual case. And then later in the round, it turns into just evidence like is good, but or evidence like sharing is good. But again, that is new and that is shifting advocacies. And the response made in in uh, the next summary saying that it's bad because it like creates a time skew is also really good because that is you know generally true. If all of a sudden the round is shifting towards we should just disclose evidence because Valley's entire strategy coming out of like after first constructive was to not read a case to circumvent the entire thing. So if all of a sudden there's strategy strategies that's supposed to be entirely shafted in second summary, that that's probably a bad thing in general. Um, and then pretty much like, I, again, I don't know how I'm supposed to evaluate this, but like the fact that like RBIs are a good thing in general, like an RBI wasn't necessarily like extended through, but the fact that RBIs are a good thing was another reason I voted, uh, cause I was pretty much dropped after the first, uh, after the app summary. So for me, it was pretty much just a shift in advocacy means I couldn't vote on theory and the independent offense thing was, again, I can't vote on that because I don't want to make a decision that other judges can't make. And the weighing was enough. If people have to consult and, you know, try to communicate with each other through their Facebook chat, like, Hey, did this happen? to make their decision is like kind of silly. So, and in general, like, I, I don't understand the purpose of why people are reading theory in this kind of 
you know, debate. This is like, it's it, the route is being read, you know, the round is happening on a platform that's meant to like incentivize inclusion debate. And, you know, for these like younger, the younger debaters to have an opportunity to learn. Uh, and if you're going to read theory and like people are really confused, like if you look at the Skype chat at any point during the round, people are so confused. So honestly, if you could just have like, if you guys had a pretty like case, like normal case debate, I think this round could have been a lot better, but that's pretty much why I voted. Uh, really quickly, just like on something that he said, I think that like, it's fine to like read theory and debate, but I, I wanted to say that like, I think that like you should make it um, like at least for Anderson, like you should make it like a little bit more accessible, i.e. go a little bit slower or give a little bit more explanation as to like the arguments. I was actually like really happy because I felt like a lot of the arguments that were responding to it were very like digestible um, or like, I guess that's a weird way to put it, but like understandable um, for like our audience who doesn't necessarily um, understand theory. Like a lot of the arguments uh, that were made were kind of like logical, but I would have appreciated and I think a lot of people would have appreciated if um, the, the theory itself would have been like a little bit more understandable for people um in this chat who have never or in this like call who have never heard it before like we'll be doing like a round analysis um uh like on uh from someone who understands it like on our channel um but i just like i don't know that would have been appreciated all right. that's all yeah i think there's ways to run a theory like for example people talk about like paragraph theory but without the weird structure that sounds yeah, I think the biggest issue was that I, I, I hadn't, uh, I, I hadn't, good, didn't have a good feel of like how long the case was and how fast I needed to go. So I went super, super fast. I was like, wait, I have so much time left. So that was just my error, like on gauging how long the case was on my part. Okay, I'll go, I guess. Okay, so in general, like most of these judges, I'm not very experienced with theory. So I just tried to evaluate this like a regular debate argument. So starting off on this external issue about the lying thing, I was here before and um, Valley did not say that like to wait for their partner or something. But the problem is I'm not going to, I don't want to just like go out and accuse them of lying just because they might've misspoken or something. I don't know exactly like what was happening during that situation, but I don't think it's fair to just say all right, outright that they're lying and that they're just like purposely like skewing what happened. I don't know if that's true or not because like this small, this small like sequence of events was like, it was like really quick. It was like about like 10 seconds. We don't know exactly what happened, but also I think that it's true that the, um, the Anderson team doesn't necessarily weigh this, right? So even if this lying situation is true, I don't know why this lying situation is more important than shifting advocacies or other things that are brought up by Valley, as I'll get into later. But also, it's true that it's kind of like a bad metric. If it's true that like Ben had to go on Facebook and talk to a bunch of other judges, like I agree with a bunch of other judges, that it probably shouldn't be used as a model for the rest of the rounds. Not every round is going to be recorded for this, and if it's a pre free issue, it shouldn't be about just this round in, in particular. But like, if we're not voting off of that thing, let's like talk specifically about the theory and the interp. I do think that um, Valley is meeting this because I do think it's about the cases specifically. Like, I don't know exactly what's been happening throughout the round because like you guys have been talking fast. But when I look to the Google Doc, it says that you're supposed to be disclosing your cases on the email chain. It's not talking about evidence in general. So to say later in the round, in the back half of the round, no, it's about evidence in general. I think that's kind of abusive. And like their entire strategy was obviously about constructives because they didn't read a constructive. So to say and kick out of that in the back half of the round and say it's not about constructives seems a bit counterintuitive to me. The way I vote for um, Valley specifically is this, so they're not really extending the RBI like explicitly, but what I do get is this arg like a two pronged argument. One is the argument that they're shifting advocacies completely, which I agree. And I agree that the shifting advocacy things makes this debate like impossible to follow because I don't know what interpretation they're actually going for. But two, the dropped argument about everyone being confused in the educational aspect. I agree with this too. I think beyond resolved, like at its core is supposed to be about like accessibility and giving opportunities to people who haven't gone to camp and maybe not, not maybe not be understanding what like is going on in this round in particular because you only learn about these things really when you go to camp and stuff like that. So I don't think this is really accessible for anyone. But even if it is accessible, a lot of people in the chat still didn't understand what was going on. So you're still like you're still like two reasons why you should be dropping the debater right there. But on the argument about investment in the recessions in particular, I do think that they frontlined and extended it. But the problem is you just said like after your impact recession sessions inevitable so then you like non-unique German impact that was kind of confusing but yeah that's basically my decision okay if Cameron is still